Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 83. Thanks for taking the time to uh, spend with me as I educate minds one tailpipe at a time. Now, this is a special edition show. This is some coverage of the Canadian International Auto Show here in Toronto that occurred a couple of weeks ago back in February. I went down for media day and got an interview, attended some of the uh, keynote uh, uh, functions that happened, and also some of the vendor presentations from some of the manufacturers and poked around to see what I could see. So sit back, watch the next 10 or 15 minutes of video here on some of the things that I found and some of the uh, talks, and then I'll come back to you at the end with uh, some opinions. Here you go. And we recently unveiled the second generation Mirai. That's a pretty cool ride. We also believe battery electrics will have a big role to play in a zero emission future. And Toyota is committed to introducing 10 battery electric vehicles to our global lineup by the mid-2020s. But frankly, additional breakthroughs in battery technology and growth of infrastructure are needed before battery electric vehicles can become truly competitive with conventional vehicles. But in Toyota's opinion, the biggest collective contributions to carbon reduction right now are hybrids and plug-in hybrids. And here's why. Compared to the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in, today, Toyota, sorry, in today's most popular battery electric vehicle in Canada, a Toyota hybrid typically uses a 1.4 kilowatt hour backpack or power pack. That means we build 42 Toyota hybrids using the same battery cell capacity as one battery electric vehicle, 42 to one. And since each one of our hybrids is 30% efficient, more efficient than a conventional vehicle, this is equivalent of putting 12 battery electric vehicles on the road with the same batteries. So hybrids are 12 times more efficient from a greenhouse gas point of view than a battery electric vehicle. Hybrids offer no compromise answer available to drivers today. They deliver great fuel economy power and performance at a price Canadians can afford. Let me put that in, into perspective. 20 years ago, Toyota Canada, in 20 years, sorry, Toyota Canada alone has sold 214,000 hybrids in Canada, saving 1.7 million tons of carbon oxide emissions. And since hybrids reduce carbon emissions by 30%, that's roughly equivalent to putting 64,200 zero emission vehicles on Canadian roads already. And by 2025, we will sell more than 40% of our vehicles in both Toyota and Lexus brand will be electrified with over 100,000 vehicles in our plan. Not just ours, because we want to help lay the groundwork for an electrified future in Canada. Our target is to sell over 1 million EVs worldwide per year by 2025, and we want to be completely carbon neutral by 2050. We are reevaluating all aspects of our business and I have already made the decision to stop production of combustion engines by 2040. 
Our production facilities are being streamlined. Our manufacturing methods are being optimized, and we're working with our suppliers to ensure that our environmental impact is minimized at every level. This also includes recycling programs to ensure we leave as small a footprint on this earth as possible. Our goals are ambitious, but we will not stop until they're met. We've learned, we've grown, and we don't just want to be part of the change, we want to be the change. There's even more to be excited about. In the year 2025, Hyundai Motor has committed a massive $51.3 billion in research and development of our electric and eco vehicles. In the not so distant future, we'll have 16 battery electric models under the Hyundai brand alone. Now, globally, we want to achieve uh, annual EV sales of 670,000 units. Now, the technology for much of this success will be our 800 volt modular platform, which promises to be far superior to anything our competitors have in the works. Okay, well, what about the short term? By the year 2022, in Canada, we will have electrified six sedans and seven SUVs. And what we're about to show you today demonstrates to what point we will be electrifying nearly every single vehicle we bring to Canada, and quickly. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our Hyundai Vision T concept. Okay, you can apply it now. That's, there we go. Is that something? An SUV and EV strategy is not mutually exclusive. Well, the Vision T is no different. It's really actually even closer to becoming a reality. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, dynamic, sporty, muscular, the Vision T compact sport SUV points to one of our upcoming core vehicles, taking us really to that next level. SUV design. As the future of mobility is undeniably electric, and it is undeniably electric, the Vision T is powered by a plug-in hybrid technology. And of course, another key element in today's world is electrification. And you heard a lot about that this morning. 2019 was a big year for us in that space as well. We delivered three times as many hybrid electrics than we did in 2018. Nearly one in five of our vehicles were electrified. We are well on our way towards our goal of electrifying every vehicle in our lineup by 2025 in a way that is efficient and effortless for our guests. So what does that all mean? The standardization of LSS Plus, the rollout of next generation connectivity, and the significant spread of electrified powertrains in our offerings are today's proof points of our push forward into the future. And here in Toronto, we are absolutely thrilled to hit the fast forward button and share a little glimpse of our vision for the future.
Well, hey guys, I f finally got an interview going here with Adam Patterson. He's the managing director for Infinity Canada, AKA the king of infinity. How are you, Adam? Hi, Ken, I'm great. Great to meet you. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, chat with me on this busy day. You know, I know it's a kickoff media day. The, everybody's scrumming these guys. They're all chasing everybody around for interviews, but I was lucky to book something ahead of time because I know people. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the right people. But anyway, I want to talk about this gorgeous car behind us, the QS Inspiration concept, all-electric vehicle. And you tell me all the specs about this. That's right. So it's a QS Inspiration concept. Really what the QS Inspiration is, is a vision of what an electrified Infiniti sedan will look like in the future. So Infiniti is planning on launching five new cars in the next three years, three of which are going to be electrified. And this is a vision of what a sedan will look like when it, when it makes it to market. Well, you know, for a vision, it's, it's just a gorgeous looking car. And, and you know, I would... I just by looking at it and the quality that I can see it, this looks like just something that rolled off the line. I mean, so what's the thought behind um, the the inspiration for the QS inspiration? So what you'll see is it's a sedan, but it looks very different than you know the sedans that we have on the floor and in, in, in the market today. Uh, you'll see that it's a hatchback version of a, of a sedan, and what electrified powertrains, as you know, allow you to do is really change the geometry of uh, of the vehicle. You'll see a completely flat floor because the, the not the need to have a drivetrain from front to back, um, and that's really one of the big changes that you'll see from Infinity in the future. And as far as any specs and time frame, you know, obviously this is a concept which you're going to use a lot of the design language and engineering for future model rollouts. So I'll give you two things about why this car is really important. So one, it, it, it shows you what uh, our two powertrains could look like. So Infiniti will offer both a full EV in the future, which you're obviously used to, uh, and our new e-power powertrain, which basically uh, has a small onboard gasoline motor acting as a generator, filling the batteries. Uh, but the drivetrain is entirely powered by the EV, uh, by the EV platform. So that, that's what uh, is really great about this. And one of the other, I'd say, design elements that's neat that you'll see from us in the future is when you get an opportunity, have a look at the logo on the front of the vehicle. It's very different from our current execution. You'll see it's backlit, illuminated, and that will, that will it, it's really look forward at what our electrified front ends will look like. No, it's pretty cool stuff. And as far as, um, from an all-electric perspective, do you have any specs or any idea what type of battery offering, you know, pack sizes you'll have, and I mean, obviously, you're going to come to market with whatever the standard ranges are now, the 200 plus mile club, as I like to call it. Any more, any information or tidbits you can share at this time? I'll give you any more specifics, you'll just have to stay tuned. You tried. <laughs> I'm trying, folks. I'm trying, folks. Well, it's a gorgeous car, and your timeline then from a full electrification is 2025, or is that sooner? Sooner than that. So we'll have five new vehicles in the next three years. Yep. And that's for the North American market? Excellent. Well, you know, it's a gorgeous car, and I wish Infinity all the luck. I've been following you guys. Uh, I know at Detroit last year, you rolled out uh, another concept as well. So I uh, love the design language, and I wish you guys all the best. Great. Thanks, Ken. Great right, to talk you. to you. Yep.
All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that coverage and some uh, snippets of material from the Canadian International Auto Show. Overall, it was a good show. It's my third year attending as press, and I think the, the summary that I can provide is there were more plug-in hybrid electric vehicles that were being talked about and shown at this show than there were all-electric battery-only vehicles. And that kind of makes sense because we're in a bit of a gap year. I'll call it a bit of a gap year where we're in between models and as OEMs ramp up even more to release uh, more models, as you've heard in a lot of these talks over the next few years, uh, that's occurring now as they ramp up and retool and all that kind of stuff. So my overall sense was it wasn't as EV centric as it was the year before. I thought 2019 was a stellar year for the Canadian International Auto Show uh, specifically around EVs, but it was okay. And, um, it, you know, it's good to see that there still is momentum, a little bit of slowdown because as manufacturers, as I mentioned, retool. But uh, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that and learned a few things. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 83. Hope you enjoyed that and thank you very much for again for watching and uh, for course commenting uh, if you are liking it on youtube i appreciate that of course if you i always get a few thumbs downs i can't please everybody oh well if you're if you don't like it then don't watch the show i don't know why i keep getting thumbs down for people that uh that tend to still watch the show and give you a thumbs down but whatever whatever makes the world turn i guess uh, i do appreciate comments keep them coming i always look forward to them and thank you very much for watching and if you have not subscribed i please ask you to to do so it doesn't cost anything it's absolutely 100 percent free and i won't annoy you with all kinds of stuff if you do so thank you very much also very humbled for my patreon supporters thank you very much for that um you know it, it keeps me keeps me driven along with all the viewership from all you folks um, to keep doing what I'm doing. So thank you for that. If you are interested, you can check out the website here and learn more about Patreon and how you can sponsor me. Even a dollar a month, uh, less than a cup of coffee a month uh, would help. Um, or if you have a cup of coffee or a couple cups of coffee you want to sponsor me, that would be great to help uh, with my efforts as I'm getting more into, into things and trying to get into coverage and travel and all this kind of stuff. It all costs money and time, folks. So I appreciate that. So thank you very much. And that's it. There's no, no really events or anything to announce at this point in time. So I appreciate you watching. Um, again, if you're out there talking about EVs, please do so. There's we're, there's not only myself, there's other people that do this. There's wealth of information to draw upon. But I, I do thank you if you're out there, of course, helping to spread the message of the EV landscape. So until the next show, I hope everybody stays safe. Um, I know the coronavirus is now getting much more serious and much more tension. So please take precautions where you need to. And until the next show, I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.